Hi there. Um, a lot of friends on Facebook have asked me to put together a video talking about music. And uh, in many cases, they've wanted me to go through my records <laughs> and talk about them and share some stories about some of the stuff I have here. Um, so I'm going to do that, probably in a couple of different parts. Um, this is it, folks. This is my 12-inch vinyl collection. Um, not big <laughs> compared to a lot of other collectors. But um, a lot of these records have personal significance to me. And there's some stories attached to some of this stuff. So I figured I'd go through some things that have some value to me over and above just music. And I'll uh, you know, tell you a bit about these things. So I guess to start, um, this is a promo copy of Why Can't Tori Read, which uh, of course was Tori Amos's band before she became a solo artist in 1991 or 1990. Uh, this came out in 88, um, very much like Miami Sound Machine kind of stuff, and you can tell the image is very 1980s. Uh, Matt Sorm from Guns N' Roses plays drums on this thing, actually. And uh, this wasn't a very successful record, and it only started becoming an item of interest when she started to find some success with Little Earthquakes in like I said, circa 91. So this was kind of a cutout bin record, and that's where I found it. I bought this in New Orleans in 1993 for two dollars. It was in a two dollar bin. I had heard of Tori Amos, recognized her from this very unique looking cover, and picked it up. And it is a radio promo, as you can see, so it's not as valuable financially as a regular store shrink-wrapped version you can find on eBay, but it's certainly worth a lot more than two dollars. This is Commercial Zone by Public Image Limited. Uh, this is a quasi-bootleg record. Um, Keith Levine, who was the original guitar player in Pill, quit the band in 82, took tapes of what they were recording at that time and put this out. Um, the band later issued their own version of this called This Is What You Want, This Is What You Get. In my opinion, this is the better version of these tracks. Uh, there are also a couple of tracks that didn't make that album that are on here that are really just superb. Um, this is the second edition of this commercial zone. Not as rare as the first version, which I think had a white cover. Um, but this is a cool record to have and cool for me because the bass player in Pill at that time, um, Pete Jones, ended up playing on my solo EP back in 2011. Really nice guy, sweetheart. He's in a band called Department S now, which is really worth uh, checking out. And this is the shirt I'm wearing, actually. War Zone. Don't forget the struggle, don't forget the streets. This was given to me by the bass player of Warzone on this album, John Ullman, who goes by John Omen on this album. Um, as some of you know, I've been trying to get a number of books finished <laughs> for many years, uh, one of which is a book on Warzone. So I um, got to talk to a lot of these guys, and John was especially helpful, very cool guy, and actually sent me this um, as a thank you for doing the project. So I'm still indebted to him to get the damn thing done which I hope to do someday. Um, John's an interesting guy. He actually ended up doing a lot of charity work for Tibet. He actually started an organization for that purpose and was very active with that, in that arena. So, um, interesting guy. I should probably look him up someday. And, uh, of course, rest in peace, Ray Bees. Oh, this is interesting. See how many people out there know who this is. Circus Mort. Oh, in a very beat up cover, but Circus Mort. This is a band that later became the Swans. Um, here's the back cover. I think four of these guys at one point or another ended up playing in Swans. Yeah, there's Michael Girard and uh, Jonathan Cain, the drummer on the Filth record. And there are two brothers on here. The Braun Records, I mean the Braun Brothers rather, they were in Swans as well. But this is um, 
I think circa 1980-81. Fairly rare. Uh, you can tell the copy I got is pretty beat up. I got this from a guy in Italy who was selling various swan stuff about 10 or so years ago. And got this for a relatively uh, decent price. But that's kind of an interesting record. If you're a Swans fan, you might want to check that out. Uh, very much like the first Swans EP, sound-wise. Really not much what they sounded like later. But very interesting. And we'll do one more for this video, and then we'll have to probably start another one. But this is a first pressing of Samhain Initium. And what's cool about this is no barcode, no mention of Caroline Records, Lodi, New Jersey street, ad street address for Plan 9 Records, which was Danzig's label at the time. And uh, yeah, this was basically pressed by the band. The first edition, 1984. Um, this one goes for a couple hundred bucks online, at least. And what's interesting about this, what makes it really special for me, is it was signed in 2000 by uh, my very good friend Steve Zing, who I've known for 20 years at least. Um, back in 2000, I went to Steve's house to interview him for uh, a cover story in the Aquarian Weekly about the Samhain box set. They had reformed in 99, had done some touring, and in 2000 put out the Samhain box set. And that was the first ever cover story I ever got paid to write. <laughs> I was just out of college. And it was with Sam Hain. So I went to Steve's house and uh, we did the interview. And uh, he signed the record. So it's even more valuable. Um, not just from a collector standpoint, but certainly from a personal perspective. Steve is one of the finest people on this planet. Great guy. And uh, that's it for part one.